seems happy with uh, the content of today's budget. It turns out that he might be the only one who actually understood it. This is something I've just been talking to Max Kaiser about. Manchester University students have provided some worrying statistics on how many voters actually comprehend the economic terminology which politicians and the media use to convince us that the economy is thriving. Well, the poll found out that 60% of those involved didn't actually know the definition of gross domestic product, a critical term used throughout Osborne's talk and half were confused as to what the budget deficit actually was and over 20% of those intending to vote for the Liberal Democrats have mixed up the deficit with the total government debt and 19% of Conservative voters did the same. Less than a third were able to correctly define the term quantitative easing and a further 21% said they had simply never heard of it. Well, uh, what aren't then the politicians actually making clear here? And is this more of an indication of the gap between the government and the people? Well, I'm joined now by Joe Earle. He's from the post-crash Economic Society to shed some more light on this. So, Joe, does it really matter what people understand about all these terms? The fact is they want to know just how much money they've got in their pocket and how the budget and, indeed, economics in this country affects their way of life. Well, I think it's really, really important that people do know about economics and they can critically evaluate what the politicians and the journalists are telling them. Because if they can't, politics becomes much more a game of rhetoric and image and uh, Osborne wants to be uh, pictured in a factory because that shows the right image and all of these things which really take away the substance from, from politics and from democracy. And, and our worry as economic students is that really makes the role of economists important. And we as, as a group, as a national and an international movement of economic students um, have been thoroughly upset with the education we've received. And we feel that we are not able now to go out into society and communicate these things any better. Is it a question of dumbing down the whole language to do with economics or is it more of a question of education? I think it's a fundamental question of education. I think economics, uh, as our survey showed, people don't feel like economics is for them. Um, people feel like it's a subject for um, older white men. Because they're put off by the exactly, gobbledygook. Yes, and right? by the gob gobbledygook. And I think what we're trying to do as students, we started trying to reform our own curriculums and we're going beyond that now and we're actually saying we want to do some of that work communicating economics and making it accessible. And so we're doing things like education for sixth forms um, and not just your standard economics you learn in universities, which is quite unquestioning. So this is an interesting point. You're saying actually the curriculum in, in the school, in the education system, isn't simply addressing this? No, not at all. And yet it's a fact of everyday life for people it's in It's a fact future. of everyday life. And uh, economics, how it's taught, even for the experts, is it's uncritical, it's, it's narrow. And it's not narrow in a political sense, because you have economists who do support austerity and economists against it. But it's narrow in the way it thinks about but the it's world. It's really open to interpretation, isn't of it? Look at what we're just seeing from of, the budget. Some people are saying it's the best thing ever, and other people are saying it's a disaster. Of course, but what the economics and the stuff going into the policy and the people advising the politicians, actually, they, they've got a very narrow way of thinking about the world. And what we're trying to do and what we believe is really important is to open that up much more. And so we've got two fronts, really. One is, is changing the way that economists are taught so they can communicate some of this better. And the other is actually not waiting for that to change and saying the public need to know about it now. What and about the media, though? Are we at fault? TV news channels, newspapers? Yeah, I think so. I think, I think what's happening is that there's, there's an echo chamber. And I think that it's very easy for, for London kind of uh, journalists and politicians to um, be stuck in that. Well, it's not easy to realize. fall into the jargon, isn't it? Yeah, really? To think, really well, you're easy. in my club, really you know easy. what I'm talking exactly. about. I mean, I've just done an interview with Max uh, Kaiser there. Yeah. Obviously, a lot of the stuff was quite jargony, wasn't it? Yeah, and, and I think it's really difficult to make it accessible. And I'm not, I don't uh, envy the job of the media doing that, but I think it's really important. And, and I don't think it's a matter really of individuals. It's more of a wider structural thing and about changing that and having a culture which public debate around economics, really important issues that and affect And then you can make informed lives. decisions. It, and that's what, and without that, you don't have democracy or you have a very formal democracy um, in which you can go and vote, but you can't make any decisions between who you actually believe will represent your best interest. Joe, great to talk to you. Thank you for joining us. Thank here. you very much. Thank you.